Hello everyone to today's episode. Today we will delve into a really exciting topic. Have you ever struggled with scrolling through the history of the comets, finding what's inside each comet and then having to deep dive into the code that was there just to know what has been done? If you answered yes, this episode is definitely for you. We are talking here about conventional comets. But don't worry if you are completely new to this concept. I will divide it into the basics and then explain you how can you tackle it from the beginning. Let's first address why these conventional comets are crucial for you. This is a simple structured way which will allow your reviewers or anyone who will look into the code in the future to know exactly what the comet is about, what does it bring without the need to get into the code. And that's why it's really simple to do that. Here are a few compelling reasons. Better understanding. The conventional comets give you the information what and why it was added as a comet. Automated tooling, because this standardized way of having the commit messages allows a lot of automated tools to, let's say, build for you the automated release notes for your repository. Number three, it's just about faster debugging. You look into history of the changes in the file and you see what was brought in the concrete commit. And finally, number four is about improved collaboration. If you decide on this way of conventional commits, then your entire team follows the way to do these commit messages. So all the messages look in the same way. Of course, there are other ways to handle it, but this with conventional commits is quite obvious to use and you will see why in a moment. In short, adopting these conventional commits will bring you some kind of a discipline in your team because when everyone agrees on using it, then it will be easy for entire team to just follow the conventional commits structure. Usually when we add commit messages, we write something like add XYZ to this point or extend this API with the endpoint ABC or fix the bug in shopping cart or something like that. Quite often these messages which we are writing are not that direct and we don't know what was exactly changed inside the code that we are committing. In conventional commits, we have some kind of convention, as the name suggests, and this is prefix. There are many different prefixes in conventional commits, two which are the most known and the basic ones, and it's about adding a feature and adding a bug. And we have as well other ones for builds, for CI, for documentation, refactoring, styling, and many, many more, as you can see in the slide. What I want to show you today are the conventions which I am using on a daily basis. And these are based on the experience from different software development teams that I had a pleasure to work with. And this is something that was usually used. First of all, we have a feature. Adding a feature is marked by prefix fit with colon. And after this colon, we have a message like add drag and drop to upload a file. Now, when anyone looks at it, he can see that here we added some code related to drag and drop feature and we introduced it to our code base. And now I don't need to get into it to see, to know what was changed within this commit. Second one is about fixing. So here we have a prefix fix colon and then we say what did we fix. So we can say fix colon incorrect behavior of apply changes button. And here we know what someone did in this commit. And these are two which are used most. However, there is as well another prefix that is called refactor. And this refactor prefix we use when we want to change something in code, but it is not fixing any bug. 
So we are changing the behavior. The example here can be refactor colon apply changes button enabled by default. So before it was not enabled by default, it was disabled and now we want just to have it enabled. Another prefix that was used quite often in the teams that I was a part of was documentation. And this is mentioned as prefix docs colon. And then we say, for example, edit chapter about technology to our readme or edit architecture decision record about something and so on. So this is for documentation. And the fifth that is used quite often by the teams that I used to work in is about CI. So whenever we touch anything related to CI, for example, the YAML files, we are adding prefix CI colon, and then we are saying what was changed. So for example, we can say that CI colon added end-to-end -end tests to pull request and so on. So this is something that you can use here. So if we have to sum it up, it's about feature, fit, fix of the bug, refactor, docs, and CI. And these are the top five that I am using. I am not using, for example, test colon prefix because the tests are coming always with the code that we are pushing. So therefore it makes no sense to just add test. We are usually adding it as a feature with the code that is coming into the code base. What is worth to mention is that you can use as well in this conventional commits some kind of other things and this other thing can be exclamation mark. Exclamation mark is defining that within this feature we introduced a breaking change. So anyone who will see the fit with exclamation mark and colon will know that the breaking change was committed here with this code. And then we can easily spot when something changed. And this is as well a great thing to add to your messages. As well, you can add some body to your commit. And in this body, you can say that it's a breaking change colon, and then you are explaining why it is a breaking change. So it's up to you and your team's decision if you would like as well to use this body for each commit message. However, I find it quite useful when we are just doing this commit messages with the conventional commits. And this is something that I wanted to show you today. Thank you for watching today's episode. Let me know in comments if you use this convention or not. If you would like to read more about that, I leave a link in the description of this movie and wish you a great weekend and see you next Friday.